Having talked about why we want to have case classes in our programs, now we should look at how we create case classes and what they are syntactically in Scala. So we'll create a little Scala file here. We'll import our standard input just in case we need to use it. And the syntax for creating case class starts with, unsurprisingly, the keywords case class. Then we follow it by the name that we want to give to the case class. This can be any valid Scala name, but it is customary when naming types to use capital letters. You've probably noticed that things like int and double and string all start with capital letters in Scala. We should follow that same rule. So some examples that we might up with. Previous video mentioned the use of a point. Okay. So point 3D would be a point in 3 space. And after the name of the case class, we open parentheses and we give it an argument list, just like we would with a function. These are the things that are going to be passed in when we create our case class, and they're also the values that the case class is going to hold for us. In the case of a point, it's fairly simple. We want an x a Y, and a Z, all of which are doubles. That's the end of our case class declaration. To make that clear, let's look at another example. So case class. In this case, I want to define a student. Maybe this is a student record that we are using for a grading application. Things I want to know about the student. I want to know their name. The name is a string. There are lots of other things I could know, but if it's a grading application, the most important thing to have is going to be the grades for that student. So we might have their test grades, which we could represent as a list of int. We might have their assignments, which will also be a list of int. And maybe we give quizzes, which is also a list of int. We close off our argument list and that defines another case class for us. To check that we're doing things correctly, let's go ahead and let's open up a Scala REPL and we will load in that file. Sure enough, it is happy with the classes that we've created for point 3D and student. So now that we've defined those, how are we going to create instances of them? How am I going to make myself a new point? Well, the syntax for that is also fairly straightforward. We just give the name of the case class, and then, just like we're calling a function, we give it the arguments for what it is we want to pass in. So the point at location 1, 2, 3 could be represented like that. You will see that because the point, these are all doubles, they get printed out <coughs> nicely as doubles, and that's how they're stored. If I wanted to create a student, I could create my student. I have to pass the first argument of a string, and then I need to have lists of integers for the different grades. In the assignments, and then the quiz grades. and that would build a student for us. So syntax for creating case classes, syntax for instantiating them, making individual instances of them. There are significant similarities to what we did when we were creating functions. We have our formal arguments, which specify a name and a type, or the formal parameters, and we have our actual arguments, which are just the values that get passed in. Uh, if this had been a function, our keyword for declaring the function would have been def. In this case, we use the keywords case and class. We'll see later on that you can actually declare things with just a class, but we want the benefits that come with a case. It'll make it much easier for us to work with, and we're just going to use these for grouping data together at this point. 
So now we know how to declare our case classes and how to create instances of them. We'll come back and look at how we can actually use these things once we've made them.